Integrated engineering software provides two completely different methods for simulating real-world problems, the boundary element method, or BEM, and the finite element method, or FEM. Advantages of BEM Open regions are not a problem and are handled automatically, and BEM gives extreme accuracy for field solutions. Advantages of FEM Nonlinear problems can be easily solved, and FEM is easy to extend to transient problems. Advantages of both BEM and FEM It's beneficial to verify your results by comparing the two different methods, and you're able to choose the right technology for the problem you are working on. One of the positive aspects of boundary elements is the ability to calculate fields external to the object we are looking at. In this case, we have a high voltage bushing and what we want to do is not only calculate the fields inside the bushing, but in the airspace around it or on the surface. As you can see here, we have calculated the electric field on a plane in the surrounding airspace. This model shows the electric field on the top part of one of the bushings. We have modeled some water drops and we can see that at a given area we get a higher electric field than elsewhere due to the water drops. To solve this problem, all that's required is a 2D mesh on the surfaces. We can see that the triangles are more refined in and around where the water drops are, but the important thing to realize here as a boundary element solution, the only thing that's required are the boundary elements which only exist on the air dielectric interface. They are not in any way located inside the volumes. As we zoom out, we can see that to solve a complicated problem like this, we need a large number of boundary elements. If this problem was to be solved with finite elements, we would probably need in the order of hundreds of millions, if not billions, of finite elements. This is an example of an electric motor. We have some coils, permanent magnets, and magnetic steel holding them together. The permanent magnet field interacts with the current in the coils to produce a torque. Unlike the bushing, this problem is not as well suited for boundary elements. We are only concerned about the field inside the motor, as the region exterior to the motor doesn't need to be modeled. For these problems, boundary elements are not the preferred choice, as finite elements tend to give a faster result. This problem was solved as a static problem. If we want to solve a full dynamic problem, finite elements must be employed. To illustrate a little more clearly the differences between the boundary elements and finite elements, this is a two-dimensional cross-section similar to the previous 3D motor. If we go to the solution menu, we have the ability to set solutions either by the finite element or boundary element method. In this case, we tell the program to put its own mesh here, and we can see the program generate a finite element mesh for this problem. We can see with the finite elements, the mesh is throughout the entire domain of the problem, including the air surrounding the motor. If we were to solve this with the same problem, but change the solution to boundary elements, the boundary elements are only located on the boundary of the given problem, and there is nothing in the external space. Although we are solving the exact same problem, we can do it by the two different methods and compare those results to make sure that the simulation is accurate enough to give the same numerical results. Please visit our website at www.integratedsoft.com for a more comprehensive review of both technologies.